Hey, welcome back. It's another episode of What Are We Missing? Man, I'm so excited for this guest that we have right now. This dude was supposed to be on episode like two. We on episode, I don't even know what episode this is now. But um, I look up to this dude. Um, Man, he's just someone that's a legend around these parts in Grand Rapids. And just, just all around good dude. Um, so without further ado, we got Thomas Kelly, Michigan State, Grand Rapids Union, legend, current Western Michigan uh, assistant coach. How's it going, bro? Hey, man, everything going good, man. No complaints, no complaints. Just staying yeah. in the grind. You already know. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, we t- kind of talked a little bit off camera, but uh, looks like you guys, you know, uh, squeaked one out yesterday. Um, you guys are on a two game win streak right now. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, man, I mean, right now to have these guys really sticking to the grind at this late in the year and steady buying in and basically reinventing themselves, man, it's really, it's really been, it's really been great. I mean, to be honest, cause not throwing in the towel, you yeah. know, they fighting through it and to get through a win like yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Was, was big time for us. Big time. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, and that's good to see. And it's good to see uh, them Godwin boys um, out there playing. Um, I saw a stat where I think Lamar's like top 10 or 15 in, in three points made per game or something like that. Yeah. I think about, about about three a game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like up like three and a half or something. Like, like just a little under three and a half. I mean, the yeah. guy – the guys, he's been impressive, man. He's been impressive. Yeah, yeah. How has it been? Like, you know, they, man, rec- recently just transferred. Um, so how, how do you feel they're doing as far as, like, coming along in the program and in the system and stuff like that? Come up for them, right? Yeah, Lamar yeah. and uh, Keith. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, to be honest, like, everybody think it would be typical because they're coming from you know, higher programs, you right. know. But – them dudes came in open arms, mm-hmm. ready to go. Like I said, we have workouts starting at six in the six in the morning mm-hmm. in July. Dude, them guys has been great ever since, man. I mean, honestly, because they all went to wanted to play and want to show themselves and wanted to really, really get, you know, confidence and all of that. I mean, these guys have got it back, you know, and then some. I mean, it's the guys have been great. They buying in, they working. Yeah. I mean, and just steady. And really want to improve, every, and really every day they've been they've been going about it that way. And I mm-hmm. love that about them dudes. I love that yeah. about them. All our guys, but I love that about them dudes. For sure, for sure. I um, I heard about them first um with my brother, as you know, he yeah. worked at Godwin for a while. Yeah. And, um, you guys did a lot of stuff with them, and yeah. Uh, then I finally started seeing them play um in high school, yeah. and to see the body transformation that Marquise had, um dude just went from boy to, to a man real fast and uh right. obviously everyone knows knows Lamar's athleticism and um so it's good I, I'm glad to see them uh flourishing and doing well um is Lamar are they do they have another year next year or yeah they got to see both do they have another year and uh Hastings has two more years oh wow okay that's dope that's dope so I yeah. think y'all yeah y'all, y'all, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we and we know uh, yeah, the clash y'all got coming. We building something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we building. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we talked to Javon last week, and um, man, he's he's excited about the opportunity uh to to go to Western, and I'm excited to to see him, man. So um, yeah, talk about yeah. him a little bit, and and uh, your excitement for him coming through. I mean, to be honest, I mean, <laughs> been real excited about him because I mean. The thing I love about Javon Hanna, he's he wants to get better or at all times. He a gym rat, love the game, talk about the game. Yeah. We have conversations about the game, how to, you know, pick, he wanna pick my brain, you know. You know, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to motivate him still. And we don't even got him yet, but just trying to motivate him, keep yeah. him going. But I just love that about him. And then and what I love about him being honest, going back to your brother, because honestly it goes back to P2 and his parents. Yeah. And all that mm-hmm. Javon coming, you know, his parents, athletic parents, our athletic household. So mm-hmm. he got all of that in him. And then, like I said, meeting your, getting with Pete, 
made it yeah. made it that much better for him too, to be honest. You know, yeah. because uh, you know, Pete, you know, been about the game and really how how can I say like don't want to cheat the game. Yeah. So Javon don't want to cheat the game. And mm-hmm. I love that about him because now you come to me, I don't want to cheat the game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you yeah. know, and then, you know, and so that's the conversation we talk about there coming to us. And that's what Coach Bates is about. It's just, that's what we, it's, you know, it's just all, it's just all lined up, man. Glad we got yeah. him, man. Hey, man, yeah. man glad we got him. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad to to see him come over this way. I'll definitely be at a couple games um, next year. Yeah. Um, we also touched on this too. Um, so my brother tells me about conversations that you have with Javon's brother and Pete in the group text. Uh, so Javon, I guess, and his brother are LeBron guys. I'm a LeBron guy. Oh. And <laughs> Pete says how mad you be getting, man, in man. the group text. Hey, man, hey, man, they did the disrespect, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, we could talk about that off the camera. I mean, yeah, and they, yeah, and they yeah. just pick with me, and they pick <laughs> with me all the time, man. Cause they know it get to me, man. Yeah, like just stop being disrespectful. Just leave Mike alone, man. Yeah, they yeah. all be on Mike, man. I mean, they all on Brian. Yeah, and I can't. And other coach Kristoff is uh, coach Kendrick is in it with us. Okay, all they talk about is LeBron, man, and I, I just can't. I, I, I I'm not going. But man, LeBron is great. You want yeah. to put him on my watch more and all that? I'm with that. Yeah. But man, we talking about Mike, man. Just, <laughs> you know, we got to leave that alone. Yeah. And I see you yeah. got Brian all on the back of your Brian. I, mean, yep. I don't understand, yep. man. You, you, not, you don't got a lot of Mike back there. I got Mike. I'm not a lot, but I got Mike back here. Um, yeah. <laughs> I got some Kobe too, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm a Kobe so, fan too, man. You're a Kobe guy. Yeah. 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 R.I.P. Kobe. But um, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. But yeah, I won't be too long on this one. But I'm a obviously I'm a Brian guy. Um, but I don't. I'm not mad at anybody that says Mike is a go. I'm not mad at anybody that says Kobe's a go. Like I don't. I really don't. No. I'm not. I'm not mad. No. I'm not mad. So <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, man. I'm really excited to get into really your story. Um. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Um from the beginning and talking about your career at MSU and a little bit of your uh, professional career. Um, and then really just talking about the scope of uh, basketball in West Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. So you're a West Michigan guy through and through. So mm-hmm. um, I know a lot of people will want to hear from you. Um, so let's start with, man, the come up. So how did you actually get into mm-hmm. to playing ball, really playing sports and like what other sports did you play? Man, so I played football growing up. I, I was a football guy. I stopped playing football eighth grade. Okay. Couldn't in high school. I'm nah, West. I wasn't, nah, <laughs> couldn't do it. I mean, I thought about it. It was cool, but basketball yeah. was it. But you know, I come from it, man. My mm-hmm. parents, my mom and dad. My mom was. You can't tell her right now that you know she she don't got the quickest hands. Yeah. You know, and and, and <laughs> quickest hands out here. But my uncle Dante was instrumental for me growing up. Okay. Uh, you know. And I, you know, like I said, it just, you know, just, man, I started playing when I was seven, Wes, but I mean, basketball, you know, organized ball when I was seven, but basketball mm-hmm. been in me, man, for, yeah. you know, that's just, it's just my family on both sides of my family. Mm-hmm. And it's just something that I, I, I was passionate about early. Yeah. I knew, you know, I, I, I knew where I could go with it. And I mean, I just, you know, just something been my passion from dribbling up and down. You know, yeah. Lafayette Street, just, I couldn't I couldn't leave off the corner. So <laughs> we was kind of a house off the corner. So I go from the driveway to the corner mm-hmm. until I was old enough to go to the park. You know what right, I'm saying? So, right. So basketball yeah. has been in me since I was about seven years old. But like I said, my Man. parents, you know, my Uncle Dante, you know, mm-hmm. and, and rest in peace to my Uncle Charlie Love, Lady them, the mm-hmm. Love Lady family, my cousins on, on my dad's side. They mm-hmm. they got me going at a the YMCA. Then my man, Coach Maurice Barnes, Seaman Center, sixth grade. Yeah. You know, he, you know, he, re- you know, he, he opened me up to a lot of things too. So I was, I was blessed, man. I had some, I had some, you know, some, I had a, a pretty good circle, you know, yeah. I, a solid circle when it comes sure. to that. So I was sure. blessed, man. Yeah, that's good. So sounds like, yeah, you're pretty serious too with the game. Um, yeah. So I guess my next question was, when did you know, like, man, I, I can really go somewhere with this and, when you realize it, what types of stuff were you like? Were you doing to people? <laughs> well, like I said, 
going back, man, like, you know, because back then, you know, playing in the Gus Smackers growing up, growing yeah. up and yeah. could never get a first place West until probably like seventh grade because we kept uh, losing. Yeah. You know, I was just so, I was little, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but to be real, man, it was like, man, really starting, like I said, you know, starting fifth, fifth grade, mm. by sixth grade, that's said, playing with Seaman Center and, you know, being a point guard, a coach Brian's like, you know, you don't got to run the offense all the time. Mm-hmm. And it, then uh, I remember by, I knew it was real when I, I started playing AAU junior high. Uh, and I was, you know, honestly, I was the only black kid on this team as mm-hmm. a local West Michigan team. But yeah. we went over to Monroe, uh, Romo, Romo, uh, Monroe, Michigan to play in these tournaments. Mm-hmm. And I got picked up by Saginaw Pride. Oh, okay. So I would drive every weekend, man, to Saginaw Pride. Man. And uh, like eighth grade, I played, got to meet Terrence Robeson, mm-hmm. guys out of Saginaw. Uh, got my man out to Sanders Punch or what we call him. Got to meet them guys and my yeah. coach Reggie Robeson then. Mm-hmm. And man, we it was like, you know, we was like a machine. I mean, we we worked, we worked, we worked, and we we took second in the nationals in eighth grade. Wow. We lost in Florida. But yeah. I knew then, man, like, you know what, like, man, yeah, you know, it is it, is, you know, we you know, this is something I really want to do, man. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's on. It's, it's real. on. Now, I That's knew it before then, but by eighth grade, by that time, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got to go, man. Driving yeah. back and forth to Saginaw, mm-hmm. sacrificing that was cool. Yeah, no doubt. Um, So the Robertsons, was that, uh, are they kin to, to Anthony? That went to yeah. Florida? Sure yeah. is. Okay. Sure is his cousin. Yeah, sure yeah. is. Okay. Terrence is his cousin. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. about six, seven, Terrence can play. That's okay. his cousin. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. him uh, watching him on TV. Peeper is what they called him. Peeper, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, what's, that's what's up. So, what was uh, what was basketball like, you know, in the city as you were coming up? Um, and who were some of the guys you were watching, you were admiring? Um, what were the parks like? Like, what was it like? Man, I have to be real, man. It was, man. You learned to really, really appreciate the game the way I came to the point where, you know, all the parks was real. I mean, I probably would go like three parks in a day sometimes riding a bike or getting a ride somewhere. I mean, honestly, yeah. man, going yeah. back and forth, going, you know, just trying to get a good run. And, and everybody yeah. was so competitive. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, you know, at the time, you know, uh, trying to get myself going. So having many, you know, you know, a little nickname, Tom Tom, everybody, Tom Tom, you know, yeah. so because Pete still called me that. It's funny. And okay. I love it, though, because, you know, yeah. but um, it was like everywhere. I mean, somebody's always trying to challenge you, man. Mm-hmm. always trying to challenge you so mm-hmm. it always kept me on my p's and q's you know yeah. what i'm saying always so but like i remember growing up man i had a i had guys like like i said my uncle dante was a him 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 himself my uncle dante was he was good and great in his own right mm-hmm. and then it went like to my cousin jamie cole he was a you know he cut hair now cold cuts but jamie mm-hmm. cole he's my cousin yeah. watching him going back to like mike spicer like Mike Spicer used to ref my games at Seaman Center. And he was yeah. a senior in high school. So Mike okay. Spicer was, so I seen his, you know, he refing my games. Mm-hmm. Like I'm watching him Friday night, get it in. And then Saturday refing my games. I'm like, I'm like this dude. And I thought he was incredible to me. Yeah. Then you got guys like Lacey Jones, who was, like I said, and I was trying to look at guys that did what I was doing, like playing point guard. So these yeah. guys were point guards. So right. guys like them, I really, I really like, you know, I watched them. You know, mm-hmm. just was being able to watch him. So, like I said, but coming up, man, I had guys like my man uh, Thomas Kilgore, who was my backcourt mate, Gino Carlisle, my man yeah. Ricardo Draper. Like, we mm-hmm. all grew up at the same time. So, like they say, iron, sharp, and iron. Right. Like, we all was we all was competitive. We all was, you know, going at each other, going to Paul I. Phillips, man, West, to be honest. Mm-hmm. We would go to Paul I. Phillips even after games during the season on – on um, Friday night games, we'd wake up Saturday morning, go to Paul I, play wow. all day from 10 to 2. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go yeah. to the mall or something and trying to find it, you know, hang out. But it was <laughs> yeah. always about basketball, man. We was always about it, man. man. Always. Man, yeah. that's that's dope to hear. Um, yeah. Definitely seems a lot different than even when I was coming up. Um, yeah, like Cats wasn't really that that passionate about about basketball right um, right like y'all right. were um 
Yeah, now we like nowadays we just right. have so many other distractions, you know. Um, man. when it comes to the phones, social media, yeah, um, so many, it, man. Yeah, yeah. So much respect to these kids growing up nowadays, man. Yeah, to be honest, for sure, especially the ones that are really like Javon, um, like really trying to get to it, yeah, um, and really trying to get right. better every day, you know, yeah, for real, yeah. Um, so yeah, you saw about eighth grade, you said it started to get real. When did yeah. like recruiting start? for you when did you start getting letters and like who was really uh, yeah. coming after you so it was like so coming so after that right yeah we all went to see going up man basketball camps were the thing yeah. going to basketball camps so it wasn't all like when you play AAU back then it's like you play AAU because it yeah. wasn't a lot of teams you know what I mean yeah so it wasn't a lot of teams so you know basketball camps was really the thing so like going to five star, I went to five star, but also mm. starting out, I went to Central Michigan camp for like mm. two straight years. Okay. So going into high school, which was cool. So by the end of my freshman year, Central Michigan was my first offer at the end of my freshman year. Nice, that's what's up. You know, yeah, so Central yeah. Michigan. So even then, I'm thinking like, shoot, like, man, you know, I made it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. I got my first D1 offer. I say man. I was, I'm in my freshman year. I'm like, yeah, it's on. But like I said, that right there was just a taste of it. You know, that, yeah. that that was like, you know what? I'm finna keep it going. So then by like my my sophomore year, we played against Lansing Sexton. Shout mm. out to Sadi Washington at Michigan. That was my guy. Oh, he was yeah, like a yeah. year ahead. So we played mm. against Lansing Sexton my sophomore year. They was probably ranked like third in the state. Mm -hmm. And I go down there, not and that ain't about all that, but I remember just when you talk about moments in your life, so that moment, this moment in my life was kind of instrumental. So we yeah. played them coming from Union. So you got to think I got moved up late my freshman year. Mm -hmm. We was like four and 18. We wasn't that good. Damn. And then like my sophomore year, we basically turned the record around and won the city championship my sophomore year. Oh, but wow. the third game, that, that second game, my sophomore year, we played against Lansing Sexton. Mm -hmm. And so we went, um, so going up there, we was a little nervous, you know, with Union, we wasn't, but we go up in there, they was ranked like they was top five in the state for sure. But we go in there, we beat them, and mm -hmm. I scored 39 on them as a sophomore. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. right there, right there was kind of my my moment, you know what yeah. I mean? Because after yeah. that, like I remember that was on a Friday, that Monday, Coach Izzo, I didn't know who Coach Izzo was, man. It was a it was yeah. a short guy in our in our gym at Union. I'm talking to one of my close friends, Kai Smith, yeah. and I'm not knowing who this guy is. I'm joking. <laughs> You know, being silly, being a being a tenth grader, you know. Right, right. But my head coach called us in the middle, and he was like, you know, he's like, he was like, Tom, Tom, you know, that's uh Tom Izzo, assistant coach at Michigan State. And I'm like, oh. And I looked at him, and he started laughing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so that's when my my recruitment kind of jumped the level. Now I went from being a mid major to a high major, you know, because then you know Michigan, and you know Wisconsin, and all. You know, you yeah. see all these other schools, USC, all these other schools started coming. But that moment, yeah. my sophomore year, Wes, was was kind of like my coming out party. Because even that summer, I go to five-star camp and yeah. kind of blow up then. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can't go to five-star camp, won, won the championship there in my sophomore year, and things just yeah. started taking off then. Right. That's, that's when things what's... changed for me. That's dope. That's dope, man. Mm -hmm. So what is this yeah. like? What year is it? What what year is this? Your sophomore year? Uh, what you mean? Uh, that was like what ninety two. Ninety two. So that's yeah. like the the heater, like the Fat Five, and yeah, right behind them. Oh yeah, they they was rock stars. Yeah, yeah, right what, behind them. What was it like, like being in Michigan and you literally like in your like high school prime and seeing them and like what what was it like? What was that energy like? Man, the energy was. I mean. And the energy was incredible because I mean, mm -hmm. at that time, because it, it, it wasn't no social media, Wes. Yeah. So you got to think, you got to go live and pray, or you read about news. So being in the newspaper was the thing. So I remember we lost in the district finals my freshman year at Union. And that yeah. was my first time really being in the newspaper. I had okay. like 15 against Grand Haven. I'm mm -hmm. like dribbling. And I'm like, man, I'm in the newspaper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was the cool thing you know what i'm right. saying because it's like mm -hmm. like man wow so mm -hmm. like you like you said during that time to to be around that you see you got the five five you got i mean glenn robinson you had i mean you had 
to sit there and watch, like, to be real, like UNLV, the running rubbles, Larry Johnson, them mm-hmm. when I was young. So, I mean, to sit there and watch this, and that's what I'm saying, like, ninth grade, to sit there and watch, like, like the noon games on CBS, yeah. Saturday afternoons, like that. Like, to yeah. sit there and watch them, man. Right. I was, like, seeing UNLV play against Arkansas, Todd Day, Stacey mm-hmm. Augman, and it's like, mm-hmm. like, man, and that's why I was like, man, I want, I want to be right there, man. Yeah, that's yeah. what I want to do. For that's sure. me. Man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's so cool. And then you brought me back, too, because uh, I came up in, like, the newspaper era, too. So I used to be so geeked, like, on Saturday mornings when I knew I had a good game. Just, like, man, I can't wait to see see what, uh, you know, what they say about us in the paper. But, uh, yeah, like, back in the day, we had, like, the whole back section in the yeah. campus press like the entire yeah. back section You're right um and right. then as time as time went on it got smaller and smaller yeah and then, yeah see y'all had that part but it yeah. was just like even like I remember when we lost to ottawa hills in the regional finals my junior year like yeah. things like being on the cover like i was on the cover of the sports page man even though we lost but i was on the cover of the sports page at the sunday paper yeah yeah that's a, you know what i'm saying yeah that's so dope that's so dope to me um yeah, I miss those days for real. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Um, so your senior year, how how did you how did y'all do? My senior year, man, which now like you sound about like one of the questions you asked, like if you want to get a year back, somehow mm-hmm. if I don't regret anything in my life, man. I'm like I said, man, I'm truly blessed with what I've been able to accomplish and do. The yeah. people I've met and you know, to interact with the people I've been able to be a part to, you know, to, to really have in my life. But right. I, my senior year of high school, man, I wish I could get that back mm-hmm. because I, I got injured the 11th game my senior year at Grand Rapids Christian. And mm-hmm. I was on my way, you know, I was playing well, you know, being a you know top 100 kid and all that, but I'm playing well. I'm yeah. averaging like 28 and eight assists. I'm mm-hmm. doing my thing. And, you know, and then I remember just off of free play, just, uh, at Christian, just two of my meniscus, and I was done for the year, my senior year. Damn, and that I just, even, I yeah, that, know that, yeah, that, and that got me. So it was yeah. like, I wish I could, I wish I was able to finish that year to where right. I was heading because my confidence was at a, you know, at a high, you know, at, yeah, a, yeah. at extreme high. You right. know, I was, you know, one of the best players, you know, like I said, top one, yeah, you know, but I know I was like best guard in Michigan, best point mm-hmm. guard in Michigan, you know, so it's like, you know, I was at a I was at a real high at that time. Yeah, and no I, doubt. you know, it's just to to have that taken away from me was was crushing. Yeah, man, that's yeah, that's that is crushing. Um, yeah. So so were you committed to the state by then already? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I committed early. I okay. committed. Early. I committed like uh like October of my senior year, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I okay. I signed early. I got, I got it out. You know, blessing to get it out the way too. Yeah. You know, things sure. happen for a reason, but uh, yeah. I, I got I committed early. No doubt. Yeah. Did a did a team come in second or did a school come in second? I mean, well, you know, you had you know like you know Michigan was always cool. Like Wisconsin was it really like to yeah. be? I was like like number one. Cause even then, like George Rodman, USC was really 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 aggressive. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But but I knew then, like, to be real with you, man, of what made Michigan State more appealing because my mom will always say, hey, I want you I want you to go to Michigan State, but it's your choice. Like, come on, uh, man. Like, really, ma? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, That's tough. But, That's tough. But to be real, and to their credit, and to Coach Izzo's credit, like, they had one scholarship left. when They had one scholarship when they offered me my sophomore year. Mm. And they held it for me the whole time, man. Yeah. And for me, I respected that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I honored that because that was my first, that was my first high major offer. And sure. they stuck with me throughout with all the distractions, all they stuck yeah. with me. And that's, that was big time. That's amazing. So that that probably you could tell that they really wanted you. Right. You know I mean? There you go. Um, you know how I go. Yeah. Yeah. Are there so at that level, really at any level, mm-hmm. are there like offers like Michigan State offered you? And then are there offers like I'm going to just offer this kid because they offered him and it's not like they don't really want you. Is that like really a thing? I, ne- I always heard that, but I never knew if that was real. Yeah, well, well, you know, people, yeah, well, people don't understand. Like, you know, when you, when you, when you dealing with stuff like that, it's like building a team, right? Yeah. You're building yeah. a team. 
So when you get to that level, it's not like high school, as you know, where, you know, okay, like for example, Jenison should be, should be really appreciative of having the trammels move into the Jenison area. Y'all yeah. could easily move. I wish y'all have moved into Union District. You know Man. what I'm saying? And yeah. went, went to Union. You right. know what I mean? Right. But, you know, you know what I'm saying? But, but you think about it. That's no control. You just landed in their lap. Y'all landed in their lap. So, but yeah. I'm saying at this level, you build to your system. You build mm-hmm. to, you know, it's all, and it's so much uh, turnover and transaction to where, you know, in that now with this transfer portal, so, it, something, it, it can get tough for some kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because now people don't understand too, because even with a kid, just because you get an offer, you still got to improve. Yeah. You still got to get better. Right. You still got to understand that, you know, things can always be, I would say taken away from, but things can always go to a, another direction or you know, a, yeah. a team can move. So right. man, things can happen like that, man. And, and, and it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. It really is unfortunate, but you know, it's just, you know, that's, that's the nature of the business. And you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what I love about coach base that we, you know, we don't, we ain't like a lot of schools like that, that put a lot of offers out there. Right, and right. you don't have, and you don't honor them. You know, yeah. like we, we try to do our homework. You know, mm-hmm. when we, when we put an offer out there to you, it's a legit offer. Yeah. And I love that about us. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of schools though, you know, you see a lot of these schools out here that got 30 offers out there. It's right. impossible to have that many offers, man. Yeah, Come on, right. I say it's impossible. It, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. I hear mm-hmm. that. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, back on the topic uh, of Michigan State. So you get there, you made it to the big time yeah. D one school. Um, talk about that adjustment period, like your freshman year. What was that like for you? Man, tough. I mean, I come in flying around about a buck seventy, <sighs> and and I'm I'm to think about it, I'm the so they had one scholarship. I think I'm the only incoming freshman. I don't yeah. have nobody else. I don't have a West Trammell to, mm-hmm. to bounce around with me on the dorm. I have to learn and grow myself. Because yeah. I'm dealing with a lot of upperclassmen. Mm. But I come in there, man. I'm playing behind Eric Snow and Sean Resper, arguably oh, okay. the best backcourt in the country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm going against Eric Snow every day. Man. You know what I'm saying? And he let me know about it every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was a that was an adjustment because people understand the, the speed and physicality yeah. of not only not only the Big Ten level, but even like I said, being in the Mac how yeah, how physical division, you know, college basketball is, but especially at division one level, man, it's physical. It's, yeah. it's and it's it's mentally a challenge yeah. every day because everybody feels they're pulling their own, right? Everybody right. got to go, yeah, every day. So just into that at Michigan State, man, that was tough because like I said Sean Resper was a lottery pick. Eric Snow was a second round pick. These guys went on to, especially Eric, you know, had a long career, yep. and it was a great learning thing because I'm like my big brothers right to this day, but. That was a real adjustment, like man, like man. you know, like you know, to bring that every day on yeah. top of you know going to class and all of that. But it's just every day the the grind, and it builds character, and that's why I learned Absolutely. that at the end of the day it built character. But yeah. it was an adjustment coming from Union. Think about it, man, coming from Union High School, thinking the city league is something to yeah. Man, I'm going to play Big Ten, man. Hold up, right? Now. And right. Then, but then. And then everybody's that guy. I, you know, every okay, you know, everybody, everybody was top, you know, top this, top that. So right. now, you know, you got to reinvent yourself. Got to reinvent. Got to yeah. reinvent yourself. Yeah, for sure. I had to, I had a similar experience. I was on the opposite side, so I was a little heftier. So I was like pushing two hundred. You know what I mean? Right. So I had to get down to like one eighty five. Um, yeah. But yeah, so for me, it was really learning how to get in the best possible shape um, that I could to be effective, yep. especially as a, a point guard that wasn't lightning quick and undersized. Oh, um, I had to be in really good shape and yeah. I had to, to, to like, take care of the ball and, and be solid. And I reinvented my game. Like I became a, a knockdown shooter. I was more of a driver actually in high school. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, I watched you play. Yeah. 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 I watched you play. Yeah. 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 You're right. And then, then to see you change your game up like that. Yeah, that's yeah. big. That says yeah, a lot of sure. that says a lot of discipline about you. See, people don't understand yeah. that. That's discipline, mm-hmm. man. You adjust, yeah. that's discipline. That's no big doubt. time. 
Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, and I credit you and like mm. I've seen my brother like bringing me to all them open gyms that summer. Um, Ingles, all those dudes, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. who else was there, man? Um, Kisner, you had Kisner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man, everybody, man. Yeah. Jason Jameson. Yep. Me, you know. Yep. I mean, everybody, man. Them was some them was classic times, man. For sure. Classic for sure. times. Yeah. yeah. And coincidentally, I went back to Grand Valley that fall and I had my best season because See? hooping with you guys, man, seeing yeah. how you guys like approach the game and um even like working out with you guys a little bit. Uh Cecil Brown too. Yeah, him. Yeah. Um that's my guy. I'm just like I'm just like, dang, man. So it was a definitely a learning experience, getting my butt kicked. But <laughs> I feel like I got better as like the summer went on. Um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's funny you say that though, Wes, because that was always my thing, even right to this day when I try to get out there and play. Who, when I try to get out there, <laughs> but the main thing is, 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 is always even during them times, man. Mm-hmm. Let's go hard and have fun. Well, we're gonna play the right way, man. I yeah. tell you that. If that ain't what you do, you're not finna do that out here on my watch, man. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? And we're yeah. gonna play to win because what we was taught in college, one thing I learned even growing up, when you talk about growing up in the city and all of that, yeah. bragging rights at the end of the day was cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we sitting together and chopping it up, eating it on our phone. Hey, Wes, mm. I beat you today, dog. <laughs> I got you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's yeah. what it was about. So when that carries on, so when we playing, hey, man, we're gonna play the right way. We're yeah. gonna take the right shots. And then, Absolutely. like you said, you getting ready to go play, man. No, if you ain't gonna do that, why you 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 know you what you getting ready for? Don't do it now. Right, so I right, always right. kept me in shape, getting ready to go play pro ball. That's why I was yeah. always on that. For sure, and I I could definitely attest like everything you saying is facts because you even shut down <laughs> a couple games. Like I'm not playing if we're gonna be playing like this. Right, um, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, no I doubt. definitely definitely appreciated that. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt, yeah. man. All yeah. good, guys. I'm like, shoot, don't play. Yeah. Um. One thing that was so frustrating, bro, was like all you need is just an inch, man. Um, like I feel like I'm on you, I'm on him, I'm on him. And then you everybody's like, good D. And what do you say? <laughs> hey, better roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that so frustrating, man. Right. So frustrating. But. Yeah, man. No doubt, man. No doubt. But that was yeah. always because, like you said, going back to, I mean, I remember this. I don't mean to tell you something, but I remember this. No, you good. See, when you brought up Cecil, because uh, I started dealing with Cecil. With, how I started going to Godwin with Cecil Brown, mm-hmm. summer of, uh, I started going to Godwin in 2002. Much respect yeah. to them because he always, you know, it was always good. Yeah. I started with Cecil. Larry said, it's time. My brother needs to pick it up. We start going. But I remember he was going into his senior year and it was, I was home for a summer mm-hmm. and I was getting ready to go back to Europe the next day. So always, we always got a good run in before I left to go back the next day to go back to go play in Europe. Yeah. I remember. And I always took pride on him and my man, Bradley and him and all of them, man. I, uh, it was, and we always played the best of seven. And it was three up, and I hit the game when it shot the top of key on Cecil. <laughs> right, man. And I was like, and I'm like, I'm out. Man, Cecil didn't talk to me. Cause I usually <laughs> would call and say, Cecil didn't talk to me probably till I came back. I had a Christmas break in December. Wow. And I December and I came back to watch. He was so mad. But you know what? You know what to be real. And I'm glad it happened because mm. that that helped him. Mm-hmm. I ain't, you know, I wasn't going to take it easy on him. It helped yeah. him. Like, I'm not yeah. going to let you beat me, man. If I right. control it, I'm not going to let you beat me. Because that's how sure. I was taught. You're not going to yeah. beat me, man. You're going to yeah. beat me, beat me. But I beat him, man. And that just, that guy, him, it was guys like him, Mario, Scott, Terrell, mm-hmm. Craig, yep. all of them do, because they was all around the same time. Yep. I'm like, man, Brandon Ball, I'm not letting them beat me. You know man. what I'm saying? Y'all not beating me. Even yeah. your brother Pete too. We talk mm-hmm. stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Like Pete, mm-hmm. you go, you know, and you got some wins. Yeah, they gonna get their wins in there, but we, yeah. we, we, I'm not. You, you, you gonna have your day, but you better keep bringing it. Right, right, <laughs> man. All those names you said are all guys I look up to. Shout out to those dudes. All um, right. But Pete was obsessed with beating you. In I know, Jim. I uh, know, like, man. I that know. was his, that was his only goal of I the know. day. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So look, it was funny, man. Um, we was playing. Um, he came over for this. I think it was a summer or something. I had a mm-hmm. day off, 
And uh, we hooped here when he came over at Grace. A shout out to my man Alan Durham. We playing with him. Yeah. AD. And uh and we hooping. And uh and we get going a little bit, my team going, and Pete wouldn't guard me at first. <laughs> he wouldn't guard me, Wes. Yeah. And man, and you know, and I wasn't about scoring, but you know, making plays and we winning and all that. He went back. Hey man, hey, hey, hey. I got I got I got TK, man. I'm like, man, I'm like Pete. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this ain't back in the, this ain't two, this ain't 2005 or 2000. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but he was, he was on it, man. And it just, and we was competing and it was all fun, but we was going hard. He wanted to win. And I yeah. teased him right to this day and I still won, but he was, he was still mad. And I was like, man, ain't nothing changed. Yeah. He still want to get me, man. <laughs> man, still want to get you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's just pure, out of pure respect for you. Oh, know? come on, man. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, we talk often, and, and I know yeah. because because I, I've seen Pete, man. Pete, that came in the gym and did his thing. So, mm -hmm. it, was, so it, it was, it, it was, it's all I love. But it was just like I said, man. I went, I went trying to let them, them boys beat me, man. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. For so sure. you know, and it was, just, and it was all about, like I said, playing the right way. And everybody was playing for some, whether it was Europe, college, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. getting ready for some. So let's approach it that way. You know right. what I'm saying? And that's right. what it was. That's what it was all about. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a great segue into like West West Michigan basketball, Grand Rapids. But like, no matter where you were, you're always coming back here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to give us fits. Right. <laughs> but like, I'm pretty sure everybody can attest and agree that you made a major impact on, on us. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the names you said, Mario Scott, Terrell Craig, myself, right. uh, Cecil, my brother, right. um, everybody, just because you, you came in and obviously you, know, you want us to get better, but you're trying to get better yourself and you're, you're killing us, but like, right. it just made us all better really. Right. Um, so I definitely want to say, you know, I, I appreciate you. Um, yeah. Back then and now, like the same stuff you did, you, you're doing it now. Um, right. Right. And right. Yeah. Well, so you know, just cause you know, to be real, not honestly, man, I, I really appreciate that. But mm -hmm. you know, it, it was just like, um, you know, you want to break a chain because yeah. I remember growing up too, not a, the negative side of, uh, of growing up in the city, uh, West man was about to call you Pete West man uh, <laughs> was uh was the fact that to be real, you know you you know you get the the negativity too, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know how I yeah. go, and even yeah. then it's like I've always tried to keep my circle small, mm -hmm. and, and always you know uh you know deal with the same. That's why guys like Thomas Kilgore, Gino Carlo, we always can my man Carlo Dre, we always connected to the hip because. We always had the same goals, you know, doing yeah. the, we all trying to do the same things. Mm -hmm. So once I started getting older, man, and playing, guys went around, I wanted to come back. So that it was like, you know what? I would go up, run, you know, go run stairs in the morning, go mm -hmm. do this by myself, did that by myself. And I'm like, you know what, man? I, you know, let me start dealing with the dealing with the kids, you know. So like yeah. all this training and all that it wasn't about I wouldn't I wouldn't get money. I wasn't yeah. doing none of that. It wasn't about right. that. My thing was always giving back because I think that's priceless because I, I believe time spent is priceless. Absolutely. So I was big on that part. So my yeah. thing was like, you know what? Let me yeah, let me start giving back that way to where, you know, if, if I can really impact the kid and everybody always wants to play basketball. So it's like, if if I want to give back like that, you know, let me let me start, you know, let me start giving back that way. So it's like, hey, let's start getting in the gym. Let's start mm -hmm. going. Let's start going hard. So as I, and because we didn't have that going up, to be honest. Also, I said, my Uncle Dante, I saw even my moms, them and all that. I didn't, I didn't have that, Wes, man, to yeah. be real. I didn't yeah. have that. It's like, you know, in our case, to be real, made. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Really, yeah. we really was self made. Uh, for the sake of time, <laughs> I got like three more questions. Um, okay. Really about the, the state of, um, our the bas basketball in our city um you know what kinds of things in your opinion do we need to do to continue to grow the game on this side of the state um continue to genuinely invest people got to sacrifice without being so dang on judgmental first of all mm. you know what i'm saying but but um 
that's the that's the main thing. I mean, that's why I love what like Xavier Tillman is about that. This this young generation right now is about that. Dwayne Washington, the guys coming up now, they about that. Like genuinely trying to invest in the youth. Yeah. You know, uh having pride about it. But my main thing is just, you know, you know, like you know, just you know, just just sacrifice was that's that's my biggest thing. Genuinely sacrifice for the kids and don't have no ulterior motives. I said I yeah. never was in it for you know the money or it went up. That's why I, I never posted workouts. I never do none of that or never get yeah. in a, it's genuinely about the craft and genuinely also about getting these young kids better. And right. and let's not be so if it's pride, if it's ego, they, like I say, like, hey, I don't mind a kid being better than me. Who am yeah. I? You know, your time, your window has passed. Right. Invest into the other kids and let them, you know, let them grow. And That's and, and, and let's keep passing down. Like I told you before, I just wanted to break a chain, man. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to break a chain because me and my guys I grew up with was kind of self-motivated because yeah. we didn't have a lot of that. A lot of people didn't right. invest in this like that. Like I said, there's a lot of negativity sometimes mm-hmm. when people looking for the, the negatives of what we couldn't do or mm-hmm. something like that. And that's the case. Help us. But to yeah. be honest with you, a lot of people don't know to help. So mm-hmm. that's that was another thing, too, because a lot of people don't know, you know, really not, you know, uh, I was saying, saying study the game or whatever. But it's just like, you know, like, you know, you know people not really trying to sacrifice for the kids like that. Yeah. And, that's, and that's where I think it's, it's, a, it's a gap missing there. Like daily okay. sacrifice for me. That's yeah. why I'm on. Yeah, and that's a um I love that you said that because all I see on social media is is like it's the kids' fault. The kids aren't doing this, the kids aren't doing right. that. Um right. but you're one of the first people that I've heard say, like, nah, let's OGs oh, like step up, you know? Yes. Um and I think yeah, that's, man. that's yeah, that's really good, man. So I appreciate no, you saying that. Yeah, appreciate for you real. saying that. Because, you know, they don't know. And what they know is what we show them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and, 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 that's the, and that's the main thing. You know, so they, how can we how can we expect something out of them if they don't know? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But we're going to judge them, Wes. That's what yeah. we're going to do. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to judge them. Yep. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. So, so stand along the lines of, you already said some of these names, like Xavier Tillman, Kobe, um, we talked about Marquise and Lamar, um, even like Marcus Bingham, um, some of the players oh, yeah. today, Marcus like Bingham. like Kyler. Um, shoot, like what what makes them, you know, different? Um, you've worked closely with most of these kids. Like what what really mm-hmm. like makes them different than everybody else? Mindset, man. They mindset. And what I mean by their mindset, because, uh, you know, you know, I always say the one thing I learned about dealing with culture is always you get out of something what you put into it, right? Yeah. So if you're trying to be the best at something, you got to sacrifice something. Right. So and that's just kind of words I try to live by. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. But words mm-hmm. to live by, was, yeah. you know, is, the, is is that part. So what what set them guys apart? Like, for example, Marcus Bingham at Michigan State. You know, Marcus Bingham, you know, you had to grow, and I'm talking about grow mm-hmm. as a person. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The maturity about it, you know, approaching about it. Marcus Bingham is going to be a pro. You know, right. Xavier Tillman, his approach. Mm-hmm. Oh, I knew his freshman year. I told him, "Man, you're going to be a pro," because mm-hmm. I like this approach about it. Dwayne Washington, his approach about it. Right. You know, all these guys, their approach, their sacrifice. You know mm-hmm. what? You know what they're willing to. You know, like I said, what they're willing to sacrifice or what they're willing to not do. Like I wouldn't yeah. have. You know, hey, if you people want to call, okay, growing up, are you corny because I do half of the things, or you know, you ain't, you know, I'm a different dude because I, I didn't want to entertain a lot of the other stuff because right. I had a goal in mind. Them right. guys are goal oriented, you know what I'm saying? And for example, in their case, I said in X, in X's case, and in, in Marcus Bingham, in Bingham's mm-hmm. case, I know, I know the coach that they're playing for. Mm-hmm. He's goal oriented. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he tried to invest in. Right. And so, like I said, we get out of some of what we put into it. Mm-hmm. So, so that's, you know, and that's what, you know, and that, and this is what you get. And you, you know, you, it is strong. And it says a lot about a kid to be on that. Cause I said now today's game, the sacrifices and the, you know, the distractions and all of that goes on, you know, yeah. 
these kids are, are, are showing that they're mentally tough enough to, you know, get through that, to right. sacrifice that, you know, to, to put social media down for a minute, you know yeah. what I'm saying? To yeah. really get ahead. And that's, and I, you know, and that's, and that's what I think the difference is with, with those guys, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Right now it's a sacrifice. Even like I said, the guys I grew up with, the sacrifices we was willing to make, you know, yeah. driving, like I said, man, I'm in, I'm eighth grade, West, mm-hmm. driving to Saginaw every weekend yeah. as a kid, like, Man, you know, sometimes I'd be back there in tears because I didn't want to do it. Yeah. But I didn't think it was the best thing for me. I'm 11, 12 years old going to a, you know, situation. I don't know what I'm getting into. Yeah. But that's yeah. the sacrifice you got to make to get what you got to get. And I'm just talking about that time. Yeah, Even no playing doubt. pro ball, like when I come back home and deal with you guys, mm-hmm. you know, I never wanted to get out of shape because mm-hmm. I knew I had to get, you know, I had to sacrifice. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to be ready to go when, right. when I get off the plane. Yep. Them guys, these guys, now they approach it that way, man. Yeah. And I think that's why I see with Lamar Marquis, some of the guys, you know, they, they start to change their approach, you know, mm-hmm. changing their mindset. Right. You know what I'm saying? The sacrifices yeah. you got to make. And that's, that's what it's about, man. That's yeah. what it's about. That's what me and your brother Pete talk about a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, that, those type of things. Because he, he wish he could have got on that early on in his life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Same here. But that's Same what here. it is, man. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah. With, with you driving back and forth to Saginaw, that reminds me. So I played with the Mustangs for a few years. Um, so we practice at Michigan State. Sometimes we practice at like Kalamazoo Central, but um, but yeah, every it was like Tuesday and Thursday mm-hmm. night, um, just going to Lansing. Like me, me and my dad, would, like we almost be fighting. I'm like, man, I ain't, I ain't trying to go to practice today. Like I'm, I'm gonna get home at like eleven o'clock at night and. I ain't trying to do that. Boy, you better get in the car. It was, ah, man, but it was worth it. I mean, end up getting a scholarship, you know, um, all that, all that sacrifice and hard work. And that is actually the common denominator of all the players that we've interviewed on this show. Um, mm-hmm. We've interviewed probably like 10 players and they've all said, yeah, I sacrifice. watched them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Common mm-hmm. denominator. Yeah. So, yeah sacrifice man you gotta you gotta be willing to do that man you gotta mm-hmm. be willing to do that and that's what i'm saying like you talking about the the guys like even my, you're saying myself or you know being at it for a while yeah you you gotta we got we gotta sacrifice if we trying to build something we gotta sacrifice and get back to the youth that way you know yep. what i'm saying and, that, and that's and that's what it is you know and that's because yeah. they, they ain't know how to work like like i said you know it was, it was great like i said dealing with cecil and them and brandon ball and guys you know everybody like them dudes even Christian Rodriguez from everybody, like them dudes, man. Like, like I, I honor them dudes because they put up with me, Wes, man. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, I know I was ignorant about it, you know, just <laughs> to the point where just trying to get better. And, and I want them to be right. My man Demarcus stuck in the same way. Now he's in the Delaney play lock. Like they they know, they know how I am and they they laugh about it, but they know it at the end of the day, they know where I come from and the place where I'm coming from with it. Yeah. It ain't nothing, it ain't nothing for me. I don't I don't need nothing from you guys. I genuinely right. just want y'all to be the best, best let alone people, but the best players y'all can be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. And that's what it is, man. I mean, that's you know, and, and that right there is how you keep it going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we kind of lose track of that. We kind of mm-hmm. have moments of that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think even before me going back, looking back on the West, I think that's where this connection was disconnected a lot of ways. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, like I said, me and my crew, I was blessed to come up with, you know, five of us went division one out of my class. So mm-hmm. we all, we was all iron, chopping iron. You yeah. go in the parlor that morning, they know I was on it. They come mm-hmm. in too. And right. we, you know, and, that, and that's the, that, and that's the bill. And that's what I love about these guys growing up with X and them and, Mm-hmm. They watch them like them. Them dudes, they get along. They push each other. They, yeah. you know, you know, and and that's healthy competition. Yeah, it ain't. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah, that's healthy, Wes. It ain't. Healthy. It's not. You know, it ain't, it ain't knocking or want something. You no, know, it's healthy competition. It's healthy motivation, and that's right. And that's why I think it be the disconnect with a lot of things, man. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, <laughs> man. That's that's good stuff, and um. Like for all everybody listening and watching, I know they can like hear the passion that you have for the game and for the kid, the kids, man. And um, I've seen it for a long time. And Western really got a good one in you, man. So um, you know, I'm excited yeah. for what y'all got in the fu- going in the future. Um, great interview, man. Um, 
I had I had some quick. Actually, I do. I got two. So real quick ones. What do you think, man? So your favorite basketball player of all time is it Mike or who else? Well, I, well, I I give Mike, but like growing up, like my parents was big Magic Johnson fans too. Okay, okay. So that was a that was another thing too. So that's kind of yeah. you know. But I got through. I wore number thirty two in high school, like I said. But for me, like my mom, or for me to be real, like my mom, or like my uncle yeah. Dante were like my favorites. Like I had for me, like that stuff was cool. Like because to be honest with you. Another guy that a lot of people don't know they need to do their homework on. Like, I feel Kenny Anderson from Georgia Tech, a lefty like mm-hmm. yourself, was the yeah. best college point guard to ever play the game to me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So yeah. I was able to watch him. Like for me, he was he was it for me. But also my uncle Dante, people like that were people that I could touch. Jamie Cole, like yeah. you know, like guys I could touch were favorites. Like they were more realistic to me. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I try yeah. to you know be in tune with the moment. Like. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, like Isaiah Thomas and I, like, you know, of course that, them dudes are great, but right. I was more big on the guys I can touch. I can literally go see Friday night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or right. somebody I can go play against that par line. Like, say Marco mm-hmm. Nante was that. You know, mm-hmm. like, all them other guys was that to me. Mike Spicer yeah. was that. I said, my mom, my mom was up. She was that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that, yeah. that's it for me. That's love right there. That's love. My mm-hmm. very very last question is uh who should we have next on the show? And your answer, you have to help us get that person or people. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, I mentioned to you like my guy, uh Max Burton, another recruit we have at Western, mm-hmm. because I think he's right now the best big in the state. Mm. Playing at Williamson, they do well. So I think yeah. him, because you, you know, getting him in Japan was big for us for yeah. our program at Western. But no doubt. Also, like for me, if you want to go with Western Michigan, like I, I think it'd be cool to hear a uh, Xavier Tillman talk yeah. or Marcus Bingham talk. I would get you know what I'm saying? Possible. Because yeah. for me, yeah, exactly. Because for me, I think you know, alone myself, I think. People need to hear them because they're in the moment now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. They're getting it now, and yeah. I think people need to understand that and hear their growth now. And those right. are guys I love, like Dwayne Washington. Like them dudes are people that you you should you know reach out to because that's what you know. And because they they're they're going to genuinely give it give it to you. You know what yeah. I'm saying. No right. political. They're going they're going to genuinely give it to you. And I think that those are the next guys up. I think you should really really talk to. To be honest, man. For sure, for sure. I'm gonna hold you to it, man. I'm gonna say, yo, text your boys. <laughs> yeah, cool. for sure, cool. man. For cool. sure. Well, for uh, sure. TK, man, I appreciate you, bro. Um, no doubt. definitely want to respect your time tonight, and uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Good luck the rest of the way this season, and yeah, definitely stay in touch. And you're always welcome on the show when you got something to say. So. For sure, man. Appreciate it, man. Keep doing your thing, man. And I wish I, like I said, glad like, we can do something because I wish I could have done it earlier. But, man, yeah. you know, I got respect for y'all, man. Y'all like family. Sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I mean, I always pull for y'all, man. So, man, so we got to do this again soon, man. I mean, we yeah. do. You know what I'm no saying? Doubt. So, so expect that. I mean, on the real, expect that. And even doing it with your brother, man. Have fun. Talk. Yeah. Exchange war stories. You know right. what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? appreciating the game because the game has brought us here like brought mm-hmm. me in front of you now yeah, so that's man. what let I me mean, being honest that's what it's all about absolutely you know what i'm saying the networking and what what basketball has done for us so yeah much respect man yeah, let's be in respect. touch man yeah for sure thanks again bro and uh that's another episode of what are we missing yes, make sir. sure you guys share this episode out and uh yeah we'll see y'all soon till next time peace